Hello, and welcome to today's quick tip brought to you by Go Engineer. My name is John Nikoloff. I am a senior simulation specialist here at Go Engineer. And today I would like to talk about some of the more niche tools in flow simulation that we normally don't get to cover because it is such a specialized kind of feature. But uh, I have this picture of a cup here with another uh, what looks like to be a liquid. Um, so let's actually talk about what I uh, will show you today. I am talking about inertial frames. Gravity in flow simulation is defined in three directions, right? But we can use this, you know, these three directions to make coordinate systems that will rotate our inertial frame. So when you saw in that GIF earlier, uh, I was able to rotate that model to spill the cup. But really, I didn't move anything. I actually just tipped the icon on the screen. And what actually did the motion of the liquid pouring out of the cup was the gravity dependency. You can see my x component and y component both have dependency values starting at 0 for x and starting at um, negative 9.8 meters per second squared at y and then going to one second there is a transfer of motion uh, implying that the reference frame is now oriented where gravity was initially in the y direction then it goes to the x direction. So we can use this to essentially simulate motion without having to use any motion within flow simulation. Of course, the animation isn't just so simple. I used what's called the transient explorer, which is within the calculation control options of flow simulation. Now, you do have to turn this on uh, and select whatever parameters you want to use. I chose a periodic um, increment of iterations starting from one, 0 to 1. The parameters I'm looking for are velocity because I chose to look at the mass fraction of water within the cup and I want to understand the velocity at which you drop the uh, water, um, but that's just my personal curiosity. And then the, for the full results, I have chosen the fidelity of 0 to 0.1 second periods. So within the 100 iterations and over the entire time increment of my study, I am saving my data every 0.1 second which results to your fidelity in your Transient Explorer. The Transient Explorer is also um, just tied to the saved conditions, but what really does the act action of this is having two immiscible fluids or making this a free surface transient analysis. So we have to include time with this, and we have to define two fluids, one being a gas, one being a solid, or a liquid in this case, they would have to be liquids, actually. You cannot have an immiscible solid. Excuse me. But two immiscible fluids, air and water, were chosen for this. And uh, I will go through the setup. Here we have my model within SolidWorks Flow Simulation. Really quickly, I'll show you my model. Uh, and I have defined this into two parts one of them being an intersect where this is where I later defined it to be water and I defined this cup to be a glass. Uh, you can note my initial setup is tipped to the side. Uh, reminder that the gravitational options are in the general settings and this is with the current dependency options. Uh, and Right now we have gravity turned on for the y direction, so this is where my coordinate system is. That is holding the fluids within my model. And then at one second, we'll look at the x dependency. And there is my coordinate changing to the x direction, which is uh, down uh, for this particular orientation. But of course this is all relative to how you set up your own model. You can see that my origin is actually tipped where x is up and y is in what would be normally would perceive in the x direction. Uh, and This is where the power of customization for the dependency really comes into play because you don't need the same setup as me as long as you are defining gravity at your initial time of one second or zero seconds, right? As long as you define that 
to be normal of what you would expect and then simulate gravity changing as time goes on. That's how you would essentially duplicate the setup here. Now, as an initial condition, similar to a fluid subdomain, you can specify these particular solid bodies being a certain um, gas or liquid that you define in your model. Whatever is in the initial conditions, this is kind of a sanity check saying, yes, this body is indeed water, and my solid bodies were already defined uh, for the cup. Now, this is the computational domain where all of my mesh is contained in. And this is where all of the calculations will be made because this is an external study. Now, I'll click will show you the calculation control options. Physical time per run is three seconds total. And here is my setup for saving, like I covered before. And I'm going to just show you the cut plot that I used. This is a mass fraction of water. One being water being here, it exists. And blue, zero, being water is not here, does not exist. But with free surfaces, there is no actual limit of when there's no more water contained in the model. So if we were to play the results with our transient explorer found in the results folder. This will go through our results per selection we've made. I'll pull this player right here so we can get a full screen of what's going on. And this will start this at zero time and go to three seconds. It's gonna take, uh, usually it takes a little bit of some time to go through the first pass, and then once we are done with the first pass, it's a little bit easier loading. I am also recording this in real time, so there is a little bit of uh, sample rate issue. So if this is going out a little bit slower, then I'll most likely just speed this up until when we actually get a full animation or such. But as this goes by slowly, the red is showing us where we have defined, yes, water is indeed here, and as we trail off into zero, if we had a extra level of accuracy with these numbers, you could potentially calculate that to vapor, but that would be an approximation because simulation, flow simulation still cannot simulate phase change. Hopefully that's something we can see in the future, but who knows. And there's the animation one more time. If you've liked what you've seen today or have learned something, please like and subscribe to the video so that you can be notified on future videos that will be uploaded to the Go Engineer channel.